How's it going, everybody? In this video, I wanted to walk you through what ESXi is all about. It's something that I feel like needs to be really broken down. The thing is with it is that whenever I've watched a architecture video about ESXi, people like try to explain it to me and I'm like, okay, well, you're not really diving into the, the taters, right? There's nothing really, it's all the high level stuff, you know, CPU, com compute, RAM, you know, it all works together and boom, you've got virtualization. A little bit more to it than that. So in this video, I'm gonna actually be showing you a white paper that I read a long time ago that I bookmarked and saved because even though it doesn't relate 100% to the newest versions of ESXi, it still covers a lot of the key capabilities. So we have the architecture of VMware ESXi. You can feel free to Google this. I literally just Googled the VMware ESXi architecture and boom, this was the very first response. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on it and we're going to walk through this. I didn't write this. It's just a reference on the internet that I found a long time ago. It does have a table of contents. We're gonna walk through at a high level of what some of these things are just so you understand how it works. We're not gonna get into any super deep detail. So what is the architecture of VMware ESXi? So when ESXi was dreamt up, it was a solution to provide next-gen hypervisor capabilities. So you basically can deploy a virtual infrastructure using ESXi, using basically any underlying hardware as long as it supports the capabilities. So another, essentially this innovate, innovative architecture operates independently from any general purpose OS, offering improved security, increased reliability, and simplified management. The compact architecture is designed for integration directly into virtualization optimized server hardware, enabling rapid root installation configuration and deployment. So as that basically sums it up, it's purpose built to be a lightweight purpose driven solution. Some of the components of ESXi that we're gonna be having to understand, the first and foremost is the VM kernel, which basically makes everything else work. Then the pro and processes that run on top of it, the VM kernel provides a means for running all processes on the system. Literally everything goes through the VM kernel. One of the things that we're gonna definitely need to understand is a direct console user interface or DCUI, which is a menu driven management interface that we're gonna be using to configure things like the management interface and to verify the SSL thumbprint and that type of stuff on the host. The virtual machine monitor, which is the process that provides the execution environment for a virtual machine, as well as a helper process known as the VMX file. VMX is a actually a text document, a text file that contains all of the information that a VM, a virtual machine, needs to know in order to operate correctly. So it's got the CPU, the RAM, the hard drive, all the things that it needs, the peripherals and so on and so forth. The VMX file is what does that. Each running virtual machine has its own v virtual machine monitor and VMX process. Various agents are used to enable high-level VMware infrastructure management for remote applications. And then we have a very important system, the CIM or the Common Information Model is the interface that enables hardware level management from the remote applications via a standard set of APIs. So we have the VM kernel is this big rectangle that you see at the bottom here that's inter interconnecting all this stuff. You have the resource scheduling, you have the user world API. User worlds are basically diff different capabilities that are used to make the VMware solution do its job. You have device drivers for the network stack, the virtual ethernet adapter and the switch, the storage stack with the distributed VM file system or VMFS. Up here we have Red Hat, Novell and Windows to deploy our VMs and our VMM. So we can deploy a VM, give it the resources that we need to give it so that it knows what's going on. We have the VMX files, syslog, third party CIM plugins, the VPXA, SNMP. These are all, a lot of these are daemons which is basically just a software process that's running. So this is something that you really need to understand at a high level. You just need to understand the how everything ties back to the VM kernel. So let's talk about the kernel itself a little bit more. As a POSIX-like OS developed by VMware and pr 
provides certain functionality similar to that found in other OS, such as process creation and control signals, file system, and process threads. It's really its job is to support multiple VMs in an environment that needs capabilities and functionality like resource scheduling, I/O stacks, and device drivers, things like that. There is a dedicated file system used for VMware, which is known as the VMFS or the Virtual Machine File System. And it uses a simple in-memory file system to hold the ESXi config files, so on and so forth. The file system is independent of the VMFS file system, which is used for storing virtual machines. A VMware VMFS data store may be created on a logical local disk in the host system, so physically on box storage or in shared storage, depending on the scenario at hand. So that's a couple of those details. You get users and groups can be defined locally. So if you want to create a user of, say, Rob and a group called admin, and you want to put Rob in the a user Rob in the group of admin, then Rob will be able to execute anything that's in that group. Gives us a lot of flexibility. User worlds refer to a process running in the Vream kernel OS. The environment in which a user world runs is limited compared to that found in a general purpose POSIX compliant OS. So a set of available signals is limited. The system API is a subset of the POSIX and you have the proc file is very limited. I'm not exactly sure what, I'm not a Linux engineer, so I don't know a lot of what this stuff is. A single swap file is available for all user world processes. If the local disk exists, the swap file is, cr is created automatically in a simple VFAT partition. Otherwise, the user is free to set up a swap file on one of the attached VMFS data source. So you can't do that. You can't move the swap file around. I am aware of that. Let's take a look at the DCUI. What is the DCUI? In a nutshell, it is a Similar to the BIOS of a computer, but it's a menu-driven interface that you use to configure things like the password, configuring the networking, viewing logs. You can reboot the system if you need to. You can do basic administrative option operations from the DCUI. So that's one of the, the few, first few things that you'll definitely need to understand. When it comes to other, world, uh, other user world processes, you have the host D, which is a daemon which provides the programmatic interface to uh, the VM kernel for the direct VI or virtual infrastructure clients. VPXA is the agent used to connect to the virtual center. Virtual center or vCenter, as it's commonly referred to, is going to be the process that we're going to be using to connect our host to vCenter server and all the good stuff that goes along with that, so on and so forth. Other known ports, we're going to have to use port 80, to connect to the host system to do different things with it. You have 427, so service location protocol. This port provides an access for the service location protocol, a generic protocol to search for the VI API. 5989, the port is open for the CIM server, which is an interface for third-party management tools. And then 902, which is support for older VIM APIs and things like that. System image design. So ESXi is designed for distribution in various formats, including directly embedded in the firmware of a server or a software or as software to be installed in the server's boot disk. So essentially what you end up getting is a four meg bootloader partition, a 48 meg boot bank, you know, 500, 540 meg store partition, a 110 meg core dump partition for diagnostic images and things like that, and stuff like that. So this is basically the format. This changes a little bit in later versions of ESXi. We'll see that when we open up the system and see exactly how that plays around with things. We'll actually open up the hard drive and see how it actually deploys that. When we look at startup and operations, it's a pretty straightforward operation. The, if DHCP is turned on, you can actually configure an ESXi host to be boot from storage area network or boot from SAN. So you can basically configure it to boot off of the OS from a local storage location. Pretty cool stuff. 
management mode of ESXi, where you have two different ways of ma managing the ESXi host. You can do it through vSphere for a single or maybe one or two ESXi hosts. And then you have vCenter. So you can log in to ESXi host through vCenter server. Beyond that, when it comes to state information, is full. Uh, the ESXi system is a fully described by a handful of configuration files, so on and so forth. I'm not going to re literally read this line by line because you guys are smart. You'll be able to read. The common information model is an open standard that defines how compute resources can be represented and managed. It enables a framework for agentless standards-based monitoring of hardware resources for ESXi. This framework consists of CIM object managers, all often called a CIM broker, and a set of CIM providers. So if you want to know more about how that works, feel free to read up. As you can see here, we have the physical hardware that we talked about in previous videos, where you have the CPU, memory, network, and storage. The VM kernel is going to have basically a bunch of drivers that are configured inside of it to be able to interface between the hardware as well as the management of the device. So we can see exactly how that all comes together. So beyond that, you have so the VI API, the VMware Virtual Infrastructure API, is a powerful input interface for developing applications to integrate with the virtual VMware infrastructure. So lots of really cool stuff there. And that, that's really it. So when you look down here, this is basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to deploy some ESXi hosts. We're going to deploy some VMs inside of ESXi. We're going to manage these ESXi hosts through the vSphere web client, also known as the host client, because we're going to be managing a single device. We're going to do that for a couple of devices. Then we're going to deploy virtual center server or vCenter server. Once the vCenter is deployed, then we'll be able to manage our ESXi hosts from vCenter and all the cool stuff that goes along with that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much my high-level overview of what ESXi is all about. If you would like to know more about this, you can simply Google for this. And I'm going to try to remember to put this URL in the description. So if you want to know more about it and you want to dive into it, feel free to read up. I'm, like I said, I'm not going to waste my time, or your time for that matter, We're just reading off the details from my white paper. So that is basically how all of that type of stuff works. Again, if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, take it easy.